Let's talk about what is necessary to reduce disagreement and gain influence. Hi, this is Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations. There are three success factors for more influence in business and life. These three success factors put you in a position to gain more control of situations, to have clarity in your agreements, and ultimately reduce some of that friction that comes with interacting in, with multiple people. Uh, number one is you're going to do what you say you would, you would do. Now, this could mean actually under-promising and putting you in a position where you can over-deliver. Do you know how some people will, you know, they'll tell you how great something is, and then when you sign on the dotted line, it's not as good as it sounded in the sales pitch. You do not want to be in that position. The salesperson instantly loses credibility when what you, is delivered isn't quite what was pitched. And ultimately, the salesperson has missed this psychology of understanding that most people, when they receive the product, they're not as excited about it as when they're seeking the product. Number two, you want to get it in writing. You want to document every agreement. The Chinese proverb says the palest ink is better than the best memories. You want to have every agreement in writing. If you talk with somebody on the phone about doing X, Y, and Z, follow up with a short letter that says, hey, thanks for the conversation. It's my understanding we're going to do X, Y, and Z. And then you outline the deliverables, you set down a date, and you send that note. That note is exactly what the person on the phone talked about. It's exactly what you understood. But in 10 days, it may not be the same thing because both of your memories are going to change. So if right after the conversation you have something in writing, you both are more likely to have a congruent outcome. The same goes with deliverables. Write down the context and characteristics of the deliverable when you're planning the project rather than when you're three months down the line on the project. That's one of the issues about project creep is that there's these what ifs, these additionals, these add-ons, and then the work really never gets done. Number three is you want to deliver more value than you receive. This is a tricky one because it's misunderstood. If you want greater influence, if you want to maintain steady stream of outcomes, despite setbacks, if you want more opportunities, you've got to continue to deliver more value than you receive. Now, some people see that as, as you're going to deliver all this value and you're going to hope in the future that you're rewarded. That doesn't work. Uh, For some people, it thinks giving the customer the upper hand so that they are almost abusing your organization. Well, a lot of salespeople do that, and it it actually backfires for the organization. Here's what it actually means. It means the customer gets far more than they must give up for the engagement. So you've, you've offered something, you've got an agreement about it, and now you deliver it to the customer. The customer looks at it and says, I got a deal. I got far more than I had to give up for it. I got better services. I got better results. I got a better smile for the dollars I had to give up. And now on your side, in order to make this complete, you must get paid more than it costs you to deliver it. So if it costs you $40 to deliver something, you need to get some kind of margin of 60 or 70 or $80. It just depends on the situation. Because if you don't get more than you give, you're going to be upset. If the customer doesn't get more than they give, they're going to be upset too. So ultimately, you got to find that balance, delivering more than what you receive. Now, the benefit comes becomes you become a go-to person. The benefit is, is that there's greater demand in the marketplace for what you do. Uh, you also end up with the ability to remove a lot of drama and friction because if something goes wrong, you can go back to the paperwork. You can say, hey, look, uh, here's what I promised you. It's in my offer letter, and I promised you X, Y, and Z. And we agreed at this date on X, Y, and Z with these characteristics, and you did have a few caveats you wanted to add, and we wrote that down, and you signed it off. And then when I delivered it to you, here's the, the delivery confirmation, and here's a inventory of what was delivered, and it's signed off by your receiving uh, uh, clerk. And ultimately, y- y- you told me you got a fair deal on this because it was costing you X, but this only cost you Y. Uh, help me understand wh- where I've gone wrong. See how much power you get in that situation. Most cases, people will just back down. If you had to take it to a third party to re- to uh, 
remediate or to help uh, legislate the situation. You could ultimately take the evidence that you've got. You can show the the third party and the third party can make a decision based on, again, you promise less than you could deliver. That sets you up for success. You got everything in writing. All the agreements were in writing. You could build a timeline that provides evidence and credibility of the activity. And finally, you did deliver more value and you can calculate the value of such a thing so that you know that all parties involved gained the mutual benefit. Uh, there, This goes into a, an influence technique that I, I heard uh, Claiborne Carson speak about. Now, he's a professor of history and the director of the Martin Luther King Institute. And he was talking in the context of civil rights and peaceful protests. But I think this applies in any part of business. There is the thought of business that is a constant conflict. But what uh, Claiborne Carson says is anything you gained through violence, you have to maintain through violence. Listen carefully. Anything you gain through violence, you have to maintain through violence. And so if you've tricked your customer by over-promising and under-delivering, by delivering them something's not as valuable as, the, as what they've given you in exchange, if you've... Uh, kind of real flexible on the agreement so that you can use your your poor memory to justify the situation, you have delivered a disservice that's going to require additional disservice to maintain. It's so much easier just to get it in writing. It's so much easier to promise less than you know you can confidently deliver. And it's so much easier to deliver more value and actually measure out the value in advance. A lot of times when you get into a sales situation or you get into an agreement, people want to discount their price. But if you know the customer is getting far more value than the dollars they're giving up, and those dollars they're giving up are worth far more than it costs you to provide the service, you maybe you have expertise that is uh, baked into the cost. Maybe you have uh, development costs that have been uh, divided over many different customers. The point I'm making here is that by being transparent – clear and enforceable, you're going to have a better outcome, a more consistent outcome. You're going to have fewer setbacks. And when you do have setbacks, you can go back to to evidence. You can go back to credible materials. Yes, this takes a little bit more time in your process. Yes, you have to think out that process and the uh, choreography of the process and how you're going to interact with the customer. It also might mean that your sales process is a little bit more deliberate. It's not really out of your pocket, but this applies to what you do in the workplace. It applies what you do elsewhere. And and the last thing I want you to, to leave with is that it actually helps you avoid the coercion and the pushing of people that are unreasonable. Because again, you're, you're going down into these three steps. You're delivering what uh, you're, you're able You're promising less than you can deliver. You're getting everything in writing and you're documenting your agreements. And then finally, you're delivering more value than you receive. Anybody who pushes up against that is practicing deception. They're pushing up against that in a a way that may be uh, just a behavioral trait. Uh, They may not be the right people to work with. If they don't accept the agreement as you've written it down, uh, you can adjust it. And you can see what kind of person they are and if they're true to their word. And if they come back with something completely different, that that writing kind of anchors everything. Uh, This is a really important topic for success in business, a success in your life. And it's the basis of a lot of common law where there's an agreement between two parties that is bound by some kind of – in the past, it might have been a handshake. But uh, in in the modern world, it's it's a, a set of deliverables, a project plan, some kind of monetary compensation. I'm Justin Hitt from Inside Strategic Relations. We're here to help high-income professionals and entrepreneurs gain better influence and strength in their marketplace. And we do that through transforming business relationships into profits. Nothing secures and protects a relationship better than clear understandings and really being honest about what you can deliver and bring to the table. This is not difficult to do, but very often missed in the fast-paced world where everybody's trying to one-up each other and they're trying to get to that next target. And what you'll find following this system is that you're going to be able to to reduce disagreements and to gain influence in nearly every situation. You're going to protect your interests as well as the interests of your organization and the people around you. And you're going to do it in such a way that does not require extra work to maintain. 
It doesn't require extra frustration to grow. And that's what we're about here at Inside Strategic Relations. Thanks for listening.